come in as slow as he can. Senator, Mayor, and guests, it's just a delight to have you here with us today at IBM Indicat, the home of the IBM company. This is where it all started in the early 1900s. In fact, in 1911, three small companies merged into the company that later became IBM. I understand that 1911 was a very good year. <laughs> in those days, we started with the clocks, as you reminded me downstairs, and that's an old time recorder. And it was uh, running this morning when I was in here. It's patented in 1898 and is still doing a, quite a good job all of these years. From the time recording business, we went through a, about four decades where the punch card was invented here and machines to process, process them. And one of the big early contracts, as you probably know, is a social security contract and then into other government, commercial, and business endeavors. And during that four decades, we were doing all mechanical work. It was not until 1949 that we developed the first real accounting machine. And if you would come with me, I'd like to take you through that period from the mechanical technology right through high tech. Mr. President. take you right here. This was the technology, if you will, for the first accounting machines. It's very heavy and bulky and slow. And through the years, we made progress and had smaller ones that do the same job with wire contact relays and mechanical counters. But it was not until the invention of the vacuum tube that we were able to get into widespread commercial endeavors for computers. These are the vacuum tubes that IBM used in their computers in the early 50s. This vacuum tube has two circuits in it. 
The other part of the machine that was important besides this logic element is the storage element, and this is a magnetic drum. These two elements made the computer in 1953. Now this is a good time to tell you and show you the tremendous change that's been brought about by technology. This small module has 10 times the storage capacity of this large drum. This module has one million bits of information, and it was developed by our Burlington, Vermont uh, development and manufacturing team. And I'm proud to say that the substrate, the white substrate that is on it, was developed and manufactured here at the IBM facility in Hindicott. Now, this is not an engineering curiosity where we made one. It came right off the high volume semiconductor line in Burlington, Vermont. The logic story, a million bits of information in this, this one little chip. It's a half inch square. You can see that the chip is almost as big as the carrier. The logic is almost, is certainly just as important and as impressive. This is the logic circuitry that replaces the vacuum tube. These have between 10,000 and 70,000 circuits in one module. This module was developed at our East Fishkill, New York facility. And the machine behind you here is the, one of our 1953 vintage vacuum tube computers. The circuitry that you hold in your hand, it would take 46 of these to duplicate. So you can see the amazing changes in technology. 46 of those spread out would equal what's in your hand. And then came the inventions of transistors. And transistors revolutionized our industry. We went from relays to vacuum tubes to transistors. And the small transistors were able to make commercial machines that were extremely beneficial to business. And we developed these kinds of machines that could process checks and payroll checks at about the rate of 370 a minute. And that was the kind of uh, state of the art that we had back in the 60s and 70s. Through the next decade, we made transistors smaller. You can see the technology got smaller, and smaller means more reliable, less costly, more productive. And now we were able to take the transistors and put several of them into a package and mount them in an electronic area. So now we are doing functional things. All of the electronics in one, in one element does a specific functional task. And we lived with this for the, the decade of the 70s. But what you really came here to see is the high technology of today. <coughs> I'd like to show you be, right here is the 4381 computer. That is the most advanced computer that we make here in Endicott. I'm happy to say that you have two of them installed in the White House. And I checked this morning, and they're running. <coughs> These are the boards that are used in that technology. This is one board, and I told you you had in your hand 70,000 circuits before. This board can interconnect 330,000 circuits, and the 330,000 circuits make the entire uh, logic of that computer, and it's used by business and government, universities for engineering scientific work and commercial work. The inside of this board is extremely complicated. It has 20 layers of circuitry. There are over 30,000 holes drilled in this board that we're going to plate through later. It has almost a mile of printed circuit wiring in one board. And that mile of printed circuit wiring, the wires are very thin. Each wire is about the size of a human hair. And I'm happy to say that our reliability has improved to the point where we have shipped thousands of miles of these lines over the last year without a single defect. And that was a defect that was common in some of the, the prior generations and prior technology. Now, you really can't tell much about the board from looking at it. You have to really get a chance to look inside of it. And if you step over in this way and just look for a moment at this picture, this is a blow up of a small section of that board. In fact, it's only a half inch. It's blown up 30 times. And if you looked at a half inch blown up 30 times, you could see each of the 20 layers in this direction. These are some of the 30,000 holes that are drilled and plated in the board. 
And these are some of the mile of printed circuit lines that are in that board. And now what I'd like you to do, I still can't show you the details that's necessary to see the human hair. I'd like you to sit behind the, this microscope and I will show you just one little section at 150 times magnification so that you can get an idea of just four lines and part of a whole. That. Yeah. It's truly amazing. It's so small that you can only see it under very high magnification. And when I take you down into the factory, you'll see how people have to cope with and work with those size geometries every day. The changes over the years are truly impressive. And you know that. We live in a time of change. And this is the kind of change that has been brought about by very innovative people working on the thresholds of technologies. But to demonstrate what technology can do, the small computer that you see here in front of you is one developed here at Endicott. That computer has twice the capability of all the machines behind you from 1964 back, and it's really a computer that sits on your desk. Now, perhaps it's a little unfair to compare technology over such a long period of time. But since your inauguration in 1980, we started the 4300 series. The machine you see here is one of the later models. From 1980 to today, we've improved the performance three times, improved the reliability, and dramatically improved the cost effectiveness of that machine. That is the kind of productivity that our customers have become used to in the data processing industry. And that's the kind of productivity that we must continue to provide. We have seen a tremendous number of changes since the early 1900s of the time clocks up until today. The pictures that you see behind me is the site that we have today. And we've grown from 1,300 people back in the early 1900s to 15,000 people who, that work uh, right here in this area. Back in the early 1900s, it was predominantly manufacturing. Today, about half of our people are involved in development, in ad, ad advanced technology, and advanced manufacturing. And we are expanding. We're planning and growing for the future. Behind me on my left are three buildings that we just broke ground for right here in Indicott. And we're expanding our technology, and all of that growth is for advanced technology, development, and advanced manufacturing engineering. Over the years, we've seen a number of changes brought about by truly innovative people. These innovative people who developed this technology and exploited this technology not only built machines, they built an entire industry, an industry that employs over a million people, an industry that is vital to our economy and our national defense. And we are extremely proud as Americans to have been a part of that growth. So much of it started right here. And now, Mr. President, if you'll accompany me, we'll go down and see the most advanced technology in the world in this very building. Let's we'll take one last look. That, that is what I'm looking at, isn't it? Good Lord. 150 times. Yes. operations right here. 
And these are the people who do the work. And these machines are actually tested by our people with the assistance of computers. And we have a computer just like this one that's in a data processing center a few blocks from here that has the capability of supplying all of the data that we need to test all of these machines for these technicians. And it can test as many as 100 of these computers at a time. And that's how that we get the technology and accuracy and reliability that we need. This machine has gone through practically all of its tests. And it's ready to graduate. And some lucky customer is going to get this machine. And what we'd like you to do is to participate and do the last piece of the final test. Yes, I do. <laughs> if it doesn't work, we're both in trouble. <laughs> Now this is one of our test stations, if you'd sit down please. Now I'll explain exactly what we're going to be doing here. We want to test this computer, and we're going to use it with the computer that's over in the data processing center. And we have done practically everything to test it until the last final steps. The step comes in a couple of pieces. The first thing we're going to do is test this printer, and I know it works because this morning we printed out a message. And then we're gonna test this console to make sure that this processor is okay. Now we could have programmed this in any number of ways. You can write your name or anything else. What we decided to do is have you push one of the keys. And obviously, because you're Irish and I'm Irish, you have to push the green key. That's all, one key. Now what's happening, oh, some good news. We heard the printer turn on, and this is one of IBM Indicott's printers, and it has a message for you. And this, I know this is gonna work because we built this in one of our other buildings. We manufacture computer, the printers here as well. And now we should be seeing some snow. Oh, I think we're gonna get, we got some good news. The president has passed. Congratulations, the machine works, it's graduated, and you've graduated. Oh, look at this On this other printer last evening, we printed out a souvenir for you to take away. Now I have to tell you, it's not all good news. You took 31 seconds. Our operators normally take 30, so you have to try harder. <laughs> everybody, the Honorable Dave Martin. Dave Martin. <laughs> the 
the President of the United States. attention to a, a young lady who is no stranger to the community. Since we are in Ty Cobb Stadium in our home village of Endicott, New York. Of the residents of the village of Endicott, I welcome you to our community. Industrial background represented by the workers of this valley. The people of the community represent the this area has long been called the Valley of Opportunity. I know that when Mr. President is re-elected in November, you... He will continue his efforts to make the United States the nation of opportunity. Now at this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce a friend of ours, the United States. Four more years! Four more years! Mr. President, that American dream come true. Mr. President, we're proud of you because you've made us proud of America and have led that path back once again. and whose goal is the fulfillment of the American dream. My neighbors, these are no ordinary times and we cannot settle for any ordinary person to lead us. Our president brings great strength to our nation and to our party. He has made the nation begin to believe in its burden of taxation. What are you guys shooting? Got a recovery without inflation. Okay. Eliminated much unnecessary governmental regulation. Slowed the growth of federal spending. Thank you. Thank you, Senator and Madam Mayor. The others here in the day are all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for a most heartwarming reception. Okay, right, you, get the right. hey, you know, by the way, of course, as I said already, especially you've dedicated yourself to justice, liberty, and economic growth. And because of your efforts, people in this valley and throughout New York State lead fuller, freer lives. Our sons and daughters better education and to prepare them for an 
Reported crime dropped 7%, the steepest decline since 19... Single nation has fallen to communist aggression, and the people who see the kind of success stories in this valley multiply a million times over. Mr. Reagan. Yeah. 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 